this problem. Uh, so, just a quick raise of hand. How many actually scroll past the 100 ranking result in an app store just down with an app? Okay, one person, two person, two people. How about 200? Who had gone to the 200th row? Zero. Maybe like 10, the top 10, who, who can tell me like they look at the top 10 apps? All right, a lot more, right? However, we, we don't see many apps making it to uh, the top 10 list. And the reason why is because there's a, we, we use a lot of signals on the Play Store and Apple we use a whole bunch of different sets of signal to rank apps on uh, each of these stores. And with 1.5 million apps on these stores, we have um, basically a lot of ways for an app to not get downloaded. And statistically speaking, 60% of all the apps in the app stores do not get downloaded. They're just kind of sitting there and if you don't have a way to promote it, either by your website or any other ways, it's not going to get downloaded. So, the next problem is uh, users actually, you know, like they, they do research before they download an app. So, if I have a choice, I would not download an app if I don't have any use for it. And basically, it's not just about getting all the users in the world is about getting the users who are actually going to use your app and 75% of users actually do some research before downloading your app and this can include uh, reading some of the reviews uh, online uh, or some of the reviews on the Play Store but essentially they do research your apps before downloading it so it's really important to target the right users but it's even more important to really get the right users to use your app and not uninstall your app at the moment of download. So, really I want to stress the point of be there at the right moment because, um, you know, like we use our smartphone for different purposes uh, throughout the day and if you're not in the right frame of mind, even the right app will not get downloaded. So, it's really important and at Google, we have uh, a really rich user database to target the right users at the right time. Uh, so using the Play Store data, we actually know um, what kind of app categories this user regularly downloaded. And using the Play Insights, you can actually know who regularly make payments through the app. So when Guy talks about making purchases uh, in the game and showing ads to the users who don't make purchases within the game, well, by having the payment system through Play, we actually know who are making purchases. So for your game developers, like many of you who raised your hand in this room, uh, if you want to promote your game, we actually know who will be most likely to buy stuff within your game. So this is a really powerful way of targeting, and it's only accessible through uh, someone with the data for the Play Store. And Naturally, being a first search company, we have access to Google.com, which is also used to promote apps, and it's really intent-driven. So through this channel, you usually see a lot of quality users who are actually searching for content related to your app and then downloading it later. Um, yeah, so we use different signals here, which can range from really intent-driven to anything that can make uh, really good scale when you want to target your market. So with AdWords, uh, we're, we're taking a step back and basically look at everything that we've done so far with AdWords and the web and taking the best of it and bring that to the apps world. Uh, apps is really different and basically we don't have anything called cookies on apps. We have something called the advertising ID and for iOS there's something called IDFA. For developers, we know this really well, uh, but not to the extent of uh, maybe marketing yet. So essentially, uh, kind of converting what we know about the web and bringing that kind of targeting and the powerful segmentation of audience to apps, we were able to uh, create top of the line solutions for developers to promote your apps. So through AdWords, there are four main inventory that you can buy uh, ads to, to approach your most valuable users. Uh, first is search uh, and play. 
so in a little bit, I'm going to explore uh, one of the products that we're launching, uh, which has also been announced in I.O., so I'm not bringing any news here. Um, and second one is Google Display Network, uh, as you know so well. Uh, so this is more of sites, right? So mobile websites and um, desktop sites. Uh, however, it's re still very big on mobile. And basically, we would optimize our mobile asset, mobile site assets, just so that it can really connect to app users. So we are also leveraging mobile sites to make use of our app promo solutions. The third one is uh, YouTube. So YouTube is uh, the number one video asset out there at the moment. So through this channel, we find that users usually are very high quality because in order for them to download your app through YouTube, they're pre-qualified. So who is here uh, familiar with TrueView? How can you? I know, like, have you watched a YouTube video where you've seen something that comes before it? Something you can skip? So that's essentially is a TrueView ad. Uh, and basically, whoever watches that ad and download your app are pre-qualified. They're really high quality users. So if you're somebody who's promoting a shopping ad, if you're a retailer and you basically made an app that allowed people to buy and get stuff delivered to your home, and if they choose to watch a video, the chance of them buying something from your app is really, really high. And the fourth, of course, being AdMob, which is our app-native platform. Uh, so all the wonderful stuff that we've talked about, all the interstitial banners that are only available through the app inventory, that can also be bought through your one and only interface called AdWords. So uh, I'd like to spend a little bit of time uh, speaking about uh, the first product here. Um, so. The first one is Google search. So whenever you, uh, an user in this case, made a search on her uh, or his device, something that doesn't have your app yet, so you can surface basically ad results uh, to these users by choosing keywords that fully capture the intent of your most high quality users. The second one is AdMob, and in this case is uh, interstitial format. And basically on because um, of the size of the screen and everything, we try to optimize our ad format so that the clicks are of the highest quality. So you will only get charged if the install button is clicked and nowhere else. So basically, it's a full screen takeover where the users can interact with your ad. You can scroll left and right to see the screenshots of the ad, but will only get CPC click when the user click on install. Uh, so yes, I touched on this point briefly and it's about leveraging the mobile web for promoting the app. So before, connecting what's happening in the web and what's happening in the app were impossible because the two are completely separated. However, uh, our engineers in Mountain View and a few other parts of the world were able to connect the user journey between web and app using uh, identities, using uh, login information, so we know if the user is traversing between app and web. And hence, we are able to extend our inventory to the mobile web assets and then uh, show ads to these relevant people. Uh, the next one is video ads. So I touched about this uh, briefly just now. Uh, and basically, it's also bought and sold through the AdMob network. Uh, once you activate it, you can see that the install button will always be there even if the user chooses to skip your ad. And basically it's really pre-qualified so whoever watches a video is a really good signal that they're also going to use your ad because they've made the commitment to really watch your video to begin with. Uh, so yes, one of the most successful advertisers who have found success on this platform is uh, Game of War. So, who have seen this ad before? Everywhere. Everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you most remember about that ad? Game of War. That's the end of it. <laughs> so, like, the, the person saying that message is also pretty famous. Yeah. Do, do you know her name? Uh, I only remember the girl. Okay. That's a female. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, basically, uh, this channel is really visual. Um, you can communicate your message, your brand message really well. And if you have a good video, why not use it? You can use it here. You can just upload it to YouTube. Um, just brand your app a little bit better. 
Uh, there are tons of things you can do once you have a video on YouTube, and it's just not just unique to Game of War. Um, you know, you can compete with these guys if you want. Uh, it's really just about setting up your ad and uh, getting your message heard by relevant users. Okay, so this is uh, one of the major announcements that was made in I.O. Basically, um, uh, I think we mentioned here briefly is a $64 billion market by 2017. However, that's only in the network front. Basically, up until this point, majority of all the downloads happened organically. And um, so, can I see some hands again to who is a developer here with an app on the Play Store? Okay, uh, can you tell me where is your most, your majority source of your downloads? Um, someone search and then like 10 million. Uh, so it's organic on the Play Store, right? So, yes, so organic uh, is the main source of all the downloads up until this point. And this is something we've never done before, and we've only opening this up because we see the potential of reaching your most relevant users in this sense. So. Uh, in the end uh, of July, we are launching our latest product to this space. So it's search on the Play Store. Basically, this allows you to communicate to whoever are searching for a generic term, but it's something that your app does. So for example, uh, if you're a developer developing a photo app, that basically takes selfie photos or anything like that, uh, and you're bidding on keywords such as selfie or photo, then and this is literally the last touch point before any downloads happen, despite the source comes from anywhere else externally. If it comes from a referring site, if it comes from a referring app, doesn't matter where it comes from, but this is literally the last touch point before any downloads happen. So by funneling, um, the source of the search here, we are able to capture the most relevant intent before the download happens. So if you run uh, an ad to promote your app, well, maybe in a month or so, you're able to leverage this inventory to target your most relevant users and basically get really good experience out of it. So we've been running uh, this test with a couple of our biggest clients globally uh, before the full roll, and Rhapsody is one of them. And basically, not only do we see a really great search in the number of downloads, but also a great search in the number of quality users for, uh, for our client. So yes, so with all this inventory pool, for a developer to basically communicate the message to, to potential users. Optimizing across so many campaigns and so many different social inventories can be difficult. And that's why um, also we do the heavy lifting for you, using all the automated signals that we get from uh, different parts of our network, as well as from our own and operated um, channels like YouTube, Search, and Play Store. So uh, as I've spoken about this before, using uh, different signals that sometimes get feedback to our network by using the SDK on AdMob or uh, the payment details on the Play Store, we are able to connect to the most relevant buyer of your product. So if you choose something called the in-app purchaser as a targeting method on our network, you are able to target only the people who have made some sort of purchase within the category of apps. So that's how deep you can really go into if you want to be really granular in your targeting because you're only looking for really specific users. So if you want to do that, we can do that for you. And basically show ads across AdMob, across Search, just to these users. So we're combining different intents here to even deliver even higher quality users. And it's all about how you want to grow your business with us, that you should scale it bigger or be even more specific. Uh, and also at the end of the summer, we're launching something called the Universals Campaign. So with this, uh, you can finally be able to deliver your first campaign within minutes instead of uh, out of tens of minutes as it took you before. So with this, you will only have to set up one campaign and that campaign will buy from all our post inventory, uh, optimize everything to 
through your target CPI, so your cost per download, be it however you want it to be. And we basically optimize across all these inventories to deliver you uh, great volume at the CPI that you want, at your target budget per day. So in this part, um, uh, so not only do you have to get your most relevant users on board, target the broadest range of all your audience possible just so you can get scale, and so you can monetize your app really well, either using in-app purchases or being part of the AdMob network. But the second challenge here remains being keeping your users engaged. So in this point, uh, there are two ways to really do this effectively. You can really optimize your user experience on your app just so that you can uh, basically make a great app. So we recommend everybody to do this before they go to market with any paid media to get your app promoted. So start with a great app, great user experience, uh, great graphics. Uh, don't not create a broken user experience, right? However, the problem down the line is that you have to keep your users coming back. Um, I think the most common way to do this is through push notification. Uh, however, um, how, how do you guys feel about push notification? Like, do you feel it to be too intrusive? Who has a really, like an app that kind of pings you every hour or so? Alright, a couple of hands here. Yeah, uh, gentlemen in the green, how do you feel about that? Like, maybe every hour or so. Okay, at least it's relevant, right? Like, if, if it's like a generic message that can be, you know, like, hey, we miss you, come back to our app. If it can be something like that, like, it can really be a really bad user experience and get the user to delete your app. So, uh, these are the general stats of like app usage for users uh, in a typical market. So, 95% of apps are abandoned within the first month. So, this is uh, not uncommon. Uh, this is global average, but maybe it's even higher in this part of the world. And then 25% of apps install are never used. So, never used here, um, I mean, when the user install your app, it can be, you know, just out of vague interest or just see an ad somewhere that he wants to install. However, 25% of these apps are never open, which is a sad truth. Uh, so that's why you, in this first stage, you have to uh, really acquire quality users and organic is typically the best way, but however print can be really effective, you can target right. However, down the line, so after you figured out like what you want to do with your app experience UX and push notification, the next point to take into consideration is how you are reaching um, back to these users when, when they're no longer kind of actively using your app. When they fall out of the chart being your monthly active users or your daily active users, how do you get these users interested again? So one way you can do that is through search. So we've spoken about app indexing and uh, I think that's what this example is. Uh, so this is what app indexing does. So if the user has your app, and if he's searching for something that your app provides, this will get surfaced in the search results and clicking on this uh, search result will lead you back into the app. So that's what app indexing does and it does it organically. Um, however, if your app is not indexed because going through indexing can take some time and if you don't do it right, can be, um, well, not all your pages will get indexed. However, a more manual way to do that uh, and you should do it if there's a particular page in your app that generates more revenue than others, you can really direct a deep link uh, back into the app based on search intent. So if you do this, um, basically your search results will direct users back to the app, be that the keywords that you're targeting, uh, or you can surface your app through our AdMob network. So basically, you can segment your users using Google Analytics. Basically, somebody who made it to level 30 but haven't bought any items and you have a great sales that's going on, you can target this specific segment of users across all the other apps that he or she might be using with the relevant message of buy this now. And if you click on it, you get back into the app and then you see that sales promo, buy that item, hence some value out of that interaction. So we have solutions to keep users coming back to your app at the moment of the most relevant um, moment of intent. 
So here is uh, how you would measure the success of your campaigns. So we touched upon Google Analytics. So GA is a really great tool, not only for publishers, but also for advertisers as well. Through GA, you can gauge if this campaign is performing effectively or not. So if you run your campaigns to, across multiple ad networks, you're able to attribute in-app actions uh, revenue driven by each of these campaigns just so that you can have a holistic view on how to optimize your spend better. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, app is a serious business and if you can optimize it well, you can really make a great deal of value out of it. Uh, and so like, there's two simpler way to do the tracking uh, with AdWords is obviously codeless for Android only because we were able to map back the data we collect from the Play Store back to AdWords and hence you don't have to do anything there. Uh, so you can at least know what your cost per user acquisition is. So different ways to track, uh, it depends on how you want to do it and how many ad networks you're using. But the one thing that I would recommend is GA because you not only understand the behavior of the users using your app, how, and if you want to advertise on it later on, then GA will provide you the insights that you need to optimize as well. So yeah, uh, just to summarize uh, what we've discussed so far in uh, the past few, uh, 30 minutes. So basically, AdWords gives you access to four, five pools of inventory at great scale. And all you need to make an input is how much you want to spend per day and what is your target CPI, your cost of acquisition per users. So once we have that information, we can really run with that and basically optimize your ads across all of our network and make sure that we're delivering highest quality users at the scale that you want. Because at some point, when you hit your critical mass of users, then you can think about ways to make your data perform for you better. Maybe you can develop other apps and then cross-promote apps for each other. So that can be one of the strategies going forward. So there are many things you can do once you have a great critical mass of user base. There are tons of things you can do. You can monetize through app, through IOP, uh, but yes. The main thing here is uh, to grow your user base healthy and um, just really optimize. Uh, thank you. Uh, so do we have any questions from the audience?